I've never seen it this bad in the 25 years I've farmed. It's by far the worst I've experienced. The problem started this time last year when it was very dry. We've only had half our annual rainfall. This is now the second period of dry winters we've had in the last six, seven years. It's unusual and we would say we, we believe that that's part of climate change. These paddocks would normally have uh, new grass and well-established greenfield crops. They've been fallow now since last November and there's absolutely no moisture in the subsoil. Droughts are part of a natural cycle and if you've been farming around Canterbury long enough you probably would have been through a few big ones. I guess looking back at the rain records it shows that there has been dry patches throughout the years and followed by wet ones but from talking to other farmers, this would be one of the worst of ones. But the difference we're seeing now is that the air is hotter and the land is hotter, and with this hotter air and land, we just see evaporation happening more readily. The risk is that we get a cold winter, and with minimal grass growth, we're going to be going to struggle to feed stock to their potential. Tomorrow morning, the cows are going to be weaned from the calves and we're going to send them off to another property for grazing over the winter. Usually in a typical year we'd carry them through um, along with all the calves, but this year with the dry we're sending them to a, another farmer's property. Yeah, it's a bit frustrating having to do this. It's not what we've budgeted for or planned for, but we need to make sure our stock stay in good condition, ready for calving next spring. I think you have to make the choice of whether you sell the stock, feed the stock, or send them out to grazing. And if you can get grazing, it is usually the best option. Today is just another decision where these uh, cows, which we'd normally keep, um, we're going to sell those. So, and majority of our mixed age cows have gone for grazing. So the whole cow herd really has gone, apart from one small mob and lots of other stock as well. The 1988-89 season affected us greatly. We were unable to sell stock and also the market price was terrible. We sold lambs for $2 and ewes for $10. What saved us all on the East Coast here is, is the irrigation. There's always someone now with irrigation who can buy your stock. What's the mood on the peninsula with other farmers? The mood is that for the most part they're well organised but they're apprehensive and although the prices are quite good this year, um, the financial effect will, will arise next year. I was hoping to bring you here to show you some water on the Port Hills and the, on Banks Peninsula. But there's nothing here. Normally this would be, this is a pond that would be full of water up to my waist. The wet areas that you see all across Banks Peninsula, they come from the rain falling and getting into the rock below. What we're standing on is basalt and it's fractured. It's got cracks all through it. The water you know, seeps down into those cracks and moves down and then in places it'll come to the surface as a spring or a seep and then it'll get into the rivers of Banks Peninsula, the streams. Yeah, this is the Holmes Bay stream and um, it is very consistently good flow throughout um, the dry. That might be, you know, 10 years old or something like that, but it's not hundreds of thousands of years old and it's not connected to the, the Canterbury Plains aquifers. It all comes from rain that falls on Banks Peninsula. Climate change predictions are for longer dry periods and when it does rain, it's more intense rain, which of course runs off more quickly so there's less held in the rocks. And therefore, I think there are significant changes we're likely to see in the streams of Banks Peninsula. We probably are going to experience drier patterns, so we've got to adjust the way we farm the land, so how we look after our pastures to make sure that they're not eating out too hard. Other strategies we've got is making sure we've got good genetic base that those sale stock are highly sought after in these sort of environments, so we're targeting intramuscular fat in our cattle and sheep. A 
it's been a bit of a challenging season to start planting trees. The ones that were planted down in the gullies and uh, in the wetter spots have done well, but there's a few um, up on these ridges that have been uh, hammered by the dry. So unfortunately, the survival up here hasn't been as great as we'd hoped, but we're also looking at um, planting some more drought tolerant species uh, next year. So it's a bit of a learning uh, and we'll continue to plant. I think the effects will linger for a couple of years. We'll, we'll get some pasture damage and it'll take us a while to build our stock numbers back up again. But we will be asking the question, do we have the right numbers, the right type of animal on a property such as this? We will probably alter the, our grass mix and try and get a hardier, more robust drought resistant species. Right, so you're, you're planning ahead? Yes, I think we probably will have to change. Yeah, it is here. That's the whole thing. The climate has been changing. We've been seeing it changing. So it's not something that's a future problem. It's a problem now.